everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Mindy and today I have a special guest here with me. I have Amy Y from Amy Y channel. Hi. Amy, welcome. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me here. Oh, thank you for coming. And I'm so excited because we're going to talk about the ENFP and the ESFP, their differences and also their similarities. Some people sometimes text me or send me comments in the video and says like, okay, what is the difference between the ESFP or the ENFP? How do I know if I'm one or the other? And I do get it because there is many similarities and from the outside, it can look like they look alike a lot, I think. I think you agree as right. well. Right, yep. From the outside, yes, it looks a lot similar. But yeah. I think in conversation, people will start to see the difference between an ESFP and an ENFP. Right, so yeah, we'd like yeah. to make comments as well. So put in the comment section if you notice a main difference between us while we're having this conversation. Um, so Amy, I am curious to know what do you, an ESFP, think of ENFPs? I think the ENFPs are a lot more imaginative. And what I mean by that is I think that the ENFPs are a little bit more idea-based, whereas ESFPs tend to just do the thing. Um, where When I'm interacting with ENFPs, it's easier to talk to, to be honest, because um, ENFPs will tend to connect a lot of dots everywhere and carry on a conversation. The ideas just flow. So much brainstorming that comes along with it. So as I said, it's just more comfortable to talk to, whereas ESFPs will tend to just talk about whatever the topic's about, and we don't really stray much from it. Um, so I think that I think that ENFPs are very quirky people. Like they tend to be into really like abstract things. And you know what? They have really cool references, I will say. They have like really cool past movie references and things like that. And very creative, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. And actually what you said um, reminded me to the conversation we had prior to this video we were calling. And um, yes, indeed, I was the one who was like, okay, I have this, this question. I want yeah. to how do you and I was all the time like tell me more about this and that and uh and Amy was definitely kind of yes well this is the answer blah 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 and you you were not like trying to come up with a new question or something right or, or like a, yeah 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 um when I actually hear uh any users in general talk to each other it seems to jump the topics right and ESFPs, uh, we do have some level of abstraction but it's NI so it's more direct I think so if we're talking about something, we're talking about this thing and we can expand upon it a little, but ENFPs will tend to like, they're better at connecting the dots and the patterns yeah. in the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's weird because somehow it seems like from the outside, like we jump from one different subject to the other, but in our heads, there is something that you triggered in the last thing you said, probably that brought us mm. to talk about something completely different. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like, yep, yeah, that's me. <laughs> That I will say both of us, yeah, both of us can talk a lot though. I, I will say like, if, I mean, you know, we're in a scheduled setting here, but like without this scheduled setting, like we can just talk like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. We we're could, both very yeah. interactive. Was it like uh, 45 minutes uh, or yeah. and it felt like 10? Yeah. It's very, um, yeah, no, it, we can just, we can talk, but I think it's just that it, I'm more engaged in a physical sense, um, but I think you're more engaged in the ideas um, and connections. I think that you tend to, or any users will tend to talk and create connections, but with SE, we're just engaging with the conversation and we can really keep going. So, so I mean, think both of us, regardless. And so you mean engaging with an existing conversation, so you keep going? Right. Yep. Yeah. And just like almost like that SE force and just like pushing through um, like really straight. But I think that NE is different in that it can connect more things. So it's like expensive in terms of the ideas and the abstract. Yeah. So uh, regardless, I mean, EPs, I think, can talk a lot. Yeah. I'm concerned for that. Yeah. Both of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe let's talk about this example. I just had this idea. So let's say you're in a party. You're at a party. You're in like this new setup. You don't know right. that. And for instance, me, ENFP, I can just um, I can just walk to people and I can just start talking about like maybe I hear what they're talking about and then I will just mm -hmm. you know follow what they're saying and then I will bring on a new idea or I just say something new 
that has nothing yeah. to do with what they were talking about. What would you do? How would you approach meeting new people in this kind of party environment? I guess because what you're saying is that you can just talk to anybody and bring up whatever conversation you feel like talking about. I guess ESFPs do that as well, but I think that ESFPs are a little bit more prone to going to people that are the most um, engaging. And it's not necessarily people, by the way. I think that ESFPs will tend to go to play are more interactive in general. So if there's like a game or something that they're playing, or if there's some kind of an action, like an actual physical action, that's what we're drawn to. So I think that's, it's not necessarily people or conversations. And you know, if I, I will go so far as to say that like sometimes like those conversations kind of bore me so <laughs> to a certain point, like oh you need to be fun. Like you need to be doing something. I think that's also a difference too. Okay. So like, you go to the most active, group like maybe the ones who are playing pool or the, the funny yeah 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 exactly exactly and, and I think the goal is like we need to interact so um like for example on a first date or like you know you're meeting a stranger for the first time the easiest way to get us really going and talking is if we're doing something physical that's when it starts to really flow but to just maybe the idea of just like you know talking for talking sake or connecting things maybe that's a little a little boring for the baby. <laughs> yeah. So listen up. Yeah. The difference here. We just yeah. yeah. We need to engage in like activities together. And for NE dominant users or at least ENFPs, for me, talking with another person, like really getting to see or know what what's in their heads and getting to philosophize together, that is that is amazing. <laughs> that is just what yeah. is, basically. <laughs> that's funny and then even the ESFP will eventually just like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay cool yeah so <laughs> we're just like just break away from those like deep conversations we're just like uh okay yeah <laughs> okay yeah. but cool let's do something like <laughs> okay yeah shut up now let's do it. yeah like okay we we get it <laughs> oh it God. sounds horrible but that, that may be the difference actually when you're at the party then you go and do like to the group who's kind of active the ENFP or at least myself <laughs> I yes. tend to have an eye for the quiet people like the introverts um, oh. and um, and there is like this kind of kind of pleasure <laughs> that I feel when the introvert gets to talk and to share what's in their minds what is happening in there you know it's like whoa this world seems like a you know like like a house with closed windows and closed doors that suddenly opens and there is like a right with colors in there that is amazing <laughs> yeah because you're like almost trying to pull out all the possibilities of that of the person and what they can talk about oh yeah that's that's really cool actually yeah yeah whereas I, I think that um well for myself anyway I, I lack in that ability to have really deep conversations because it's going to stop at some point and I'm gonna have to awkwardly break away. <laughs> yeah, it can. Yeah, it can only go so far. Yeah, you're right. That that is a major difference. Actually, now that we're talking about the, the this uh, any SE because this is a clear any SE difference. Um, yeah. There is something that actually we have in common, and I wanted to discuss this with you because I think we have in common. You're gonna say if it's true or not that we have a sort of dissatisfaction for stable environments. Yeah, it's very restricting. Yes. Yes. Right. So I would like to hear what is your experience with the um, stable environments as an SE user, uh, and then mm -hmm. we will compare it to like any user. Yeah, interestingly enough, it's like for me, it's I just want an open experience or like an open option, I guess. So even in terms of like relationships, career choices, things like this, it's like when somebody tells you, you have to go on this path or it has to be this way, that's when it's just like, no, it doesn't. And then it, we get frustrated almost. And eventually in life, that is something that we seek because we do have NI deep down in there. We do seek that uh, stability in terms of following down a certain path or, you know, going down a certain way. But for the most part, that restriction is just so, it, it literally drives us crazy. Like, I'm definitely like the kind of person that's like, don't control me. <laughs> like, let me do my own thing and I will figure it myself. That's the thing. 
I need to experience it to learn or to do. So when someone tells me to go this path or to do this, I'm like, leave me alone. <laughs> I will do it myself. I'm going to figure it out. That's kind of how I experience it. Yeah. Because um, somehow you feel that your uh, ability to feel excitement in the moment is being restricted by this person. That, that's it. That's it right there. It's like you, the fun is in the doing and the experiencing life and doing it your own way. So for somebody to come in and just be like, oh, no, you're doing it wrong. You got to do it this way. Or this is a faster way. I'm like, okay, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, Hold on. I want to do it my way. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, it's, it's very similar, but different. Because, yes, I don't want to be restricted as an any user. Um, and my environments need to be quite open. And I need to be able to move here and there. Because not because of the, the, the excitement of the moment, but because of my imagination and the ideas okay right. I move let's say I love traveling but actually I don't like the hustle of you know checking in a hotel checking out moving checking right. I don't like it but I like it that when I'm there because I'm refreshing my environment and stuff I get to have new ideas I get to dream yes more. yes yep. it's like I, I I feel hopeful about the future the future is just bright I feel good in the present because there is like a the future is being unlocked by these new possibilities that open in front of yeah. my eyes because I'm moving, you know, in this during this trip. And that this that's in general, you know, having options open feel just good for my imagination. Yeah. Well, I think another key difference here is that I think that for you, the ideas are endless, whereas for me, it's the experiences are endless. And then another thing that we kind of mentioned before this video was, you know, I think that NESI will tend to find stability eventually in the physical things. So it's about, um, you know, putting things where like, you know, it belongs or like finding a stable home or like a finding a stable, something in the physical, a list or checklist or whatever. But for SE, it's more physical. I mean, sorry, it's more like grounding ourselves with the concept or with a connection. So why are we doing all these experiences in the first place? And that's where we can get into deep conversations because we find the, the meaning of life or like whatever. I, I notice a lot of ESFPs will say that. It's like, oh, I, found, I unlike that meaning in life. You know, it's just, I, I found it through all my experiences. <laughs> just like you do the thing, you have all these experiences, you travel all these places, right? And then eventually in life, you're going to hit a point where you're like, but why? Like, you know, why am I doing all this? You've hit that roadblock. And that's when that inferior and I kicks in and says, hey girl like you need to think of the long term otherwise like what's the purpose of your life what path are you taking right. and then that's when you know you for me personally you start watching a lot of Gary Vee videos and you start to get into typology and you start to almost find an admiration for these NI concepts um yeah. right that introverted intuition ability to see the future and that's when we're like oh man I found it this is the path I want to be but ironically it's like probably the next day you're going to do something else anyway but it's like I think that the ESFPs will tend to seek that uh abstract concept the abstract part of life eventually because we're going to hit that roadblock um so I mean in my personal life it's been like that it was like um because I'm always you know moving around too it's like or I like to engage in whatever experience is coming up in front of me eventually I hit that point in my life where I was like girl you're 30 like what are you doing with your life? You need to start choosing a path. And that I think every ESFP will hit that point. And that's how I got into typology in the first place. Right. Because we reached that point where we're like, who am I? Like, what is the meaning of all this? Like, why are we doing this? And then to me, personally, typology was a way of being like, okay, well, this is who I am, you know, and all this crap. So yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Amazing. It, it sounds so familiar, yet different to me what you're yeah. describing. Because it's like, as an ENFP, I've lived uh, most of my life knowing why, like, why I do what I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, sometimes no, but let's say, in, in, like, in general terms, yes, you know, and it's always for the sake of the experience in itself or for the sake of, yeah, like, I travel because I like to, you know, travel. I change jobs because I like change, I like new experiences, and, and it's, the, like, I don't ask myself what is the ultimate goal the goal is just experiencing and all of this richness i get in my brain and what i feel my emotions everything is just like amazing oh okay 
But then I reached a point when I was like, okay, but I need to organize this thing. Like I cannot just all the time, even though I know wow. what, uh -huh. and I know that the, the, I do it for the mere purpose of keep doing it. Like I need an organization or I won't be able to keep up in the long term with it. So then I started like putting more into like, um, I don't want to say schedule, but more like a, of a sort of steps or like, I don't know, for instance, even actually having this YouTube channel is a good example of how I, like I've been working on my SI of having a commitment, like something that I, I'm going to do and I'm going to do every week and I'm going to do for like a full on year. And after that year, I'm going to change the planning, but you know, long term um, and, 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 and having more of an organization in general, I think that. Yeah, I, I think you know, we discussed this before, but I think um, the difference in how we organize or how we filter is that I think that you find you do it better when it comes to like lists and Google Docs and like something <laughs> physical, like a physical standard. And for, yeah, because yeah, you emailed me and you were like, yeah, here's the Google Docs. These are the topics that I want to talk about. You can add on things as well. So I think that in your mind, it's like for, or an ENFP, they find the comfort in that physical standard they filter with si and for me personally yeah and for me personally I, I don't find comfort in i don't really need to write down the things i'm gonna say but i do need to know um uh, like the concept of what we're talking about i do need to know the topics um i do need to have a general sense and i find stability in knowing what's gonna happen in not in the physical but in just in the knowing that this is the way it's gonna be and i think esfps do strive to foresee future, like, even though we're not the best at it, but we strive to. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like, that's what you what you aim for. That's what you wish yeah. you, you would yeah. be more future oriented. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I do yeah. think eventually you, you get there. Like, I think it's a matter of maturity. The more you live, the more you learn, yep. blah, blah, blah. Eventually you integrate that, eventually. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you might not become like a super NI user, but you will be better at it. Exactly. Yeah, I, I, I think so. It, it's like, ironically, it's like when an ESFP uses NI though, it becomes mixture of NI and SE because the way I filter through life is by telling myself, well, you need to, you need to do things to know the path, which isn't really NI when you think about it. It's like, but that's not really, yeah, that's more SD actually, yeah. 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 Well, but doing things and, and, and to learn, actually that's how I, uh, actually that's a good, good one. I do that. Yeah, when, yeah. Even my friends make fun of me because like, let's say I get a new camera or in it, I get something new and I never read the manuals or anything. I want to figure it out myself. But the right. reason behind is different. I just want to figure, like, I want to see, okay, press this button and I just make connections of how things can work out. So it's still about pattern recognition, but I just do it with a, a physical thing. Oh, okay, okay. Got it, got it. Okay, whereas for me, okay, the filtering process is actually not physical. Okay, it makes sense. Okay, okay. Makes sense. Hmm. Yeah, I know it's like the idea is very similar, but it's just like what we're using is different. Yeah. And something else that also I think it's similar but different is that we both, the both types, love being in the moment. But it also means yeah. something different for you than for me. So, what is it for you like being in the moment? I guess being in the moment is just not, it's literally just not thinking about any kind of a future or anything that's not right in front of your face. So, you know, if I want to go somewhere and I'm not thinking of the multiple possibilities or the multiple places I can go to, or, you know, what's going to happen if this, I'm not really, it's just, I want to do it. It's in front of me. The opportunity is here. So I'm going to interact with it. That's my idea of being present. Whereas if I were to say somebody who's not present, or I think they tend to be people that are even when they're planning to experience something, they're still like, oh, well, what about this? And what about that? And what about this? Or like, it, it's like, they're still not actually present. You yeah. know, so for me, presence is just not reading between the lines. It's not about figuring out the future. It's really just the here and now. Yeah. For yeah. me, the, the being in the presence is important. Like I 
go like daily I do my runs and I swim in the river and I, like I do things like physical things and I love the moment when I'm running because not because I'm doing it yes but it just helps me to clear out my head somehow so yes I'm running and then I'm looking at the tree and then when I look at the tree I remember my when, when I was a kid my youth like when I was 10 oh. years old I climb up a tree so it just helps me to or go to the past and, you know, kind of um, feel like in a dream, in a, in a kind of dreamy state of the past, or I connect that yeah. because then I think, oh yeah, when I'm 50 years old, I want to be running and I want to look at trees, blah, blah, blah. So yes, the present helps me to make new connections in my head. That's why I love the, being in the present. Of course, I enjoy it. Like I go on a walk, city toward, like, let's say I go to a new city, I walk in the city and I look at the houses, but then I don't get lost in the details of, you know, oh, look at this window and this style. I look at it and immediately I'm gone. And I'm going to a movie I watch. I'm going to maybe something in the- Got it. Oh, that, that window reminds me of a photo I saw of, let's say I'm in Switzerland. A photo I saw in Austria. Okay, I have to go to Austria as well. So I'm gone and present, present and gone continuously. Okay, so okay, that makes sense. So, in an essence, you're you're not really in my mind. You're not really present then, because okay, so okay, so the difference is how we perceive time then, because you are thinking the timeline. You're you are present, but then you're kind of either relaying it to a past reference, and then once you think of that, it becomes even more things. Whereas with SE, we could be looking at the same thing, and we will describe it to you the way it is. Because on the timeline, we are just here and now. Amazing. Yeah. So like we can look at, yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't even know if this is a good thing, honestly. But yeah, like, uh, like I could be looking at a landscape and I will just see the landscape. I will pick up the beauty of the landscape though. So for example, I'm like, oh my God, like the ocean is so blue. Oh my God. You know, like I do have that uh, sense of, uh, you know, I look at something really aesthetically pleasing in it. It, it gives me so much pleasure to do so, but I'm only looking at what is in front of me either way. Whereas I think with you, you or NE, it tends to see that, but it's like, it just branches off again into something even greater, you know? And it's like, okay, so in that essence, it's like, you're, you're not really present. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, I've been doing lately because I was not so long ago, I was very sick. Um, and actually we had this a meeting planned or I wanted to do it earlier but I couldn't I remember yeah yes yes and, and, and so the doctor sent me to really rest so I was two weeks just doing nothing and I tried mindfulness so mindfulness means that I just do everything and I'm present so um, I had a bunch of things let's say um, coats winter coats that the buttons fall and I don't like particularly doing manually things like I just don't like ugh. but I'm like yeah. okay, now I'm free I can do all of those things so I grabbed like four or three um coats and I found the buttons and you know everything to repair and I sat down played classical music and I started just being present feeling how I was like, putting in and out the needle and, blah, blah, blah. and I did it and I felt like so peaceful like my mind was there. I was present. Interesting. Okay. No, okay. So our meditation style is even different or not meditation style, but that relaxing stage is a little bit different because for you, your mind is all the way over here. So you find comfort in meditating with meditating with the physical, like the, the SI part. Whereas with SE, this is just from what I think is that I almost have to cut off physical if I really want to relax. Because my natural tendency is wow. things or like, I mean, if I'm really bored, you know, like my natural tendency is to touch things and to engage with the sensory. So if I'm feeling sick or if I don't feel well mentally, it's like, I just need to cut it off. Like you really need to cut off the physical things from me and just listen to my thoughts is wow. the way I think of it. Right. It's yeah. Cause it's like wow. by sewing, for example, that's not. I'm still doing something. I'm still feeling things. So eventually I think the ESFP kind of needs to learn to just cut out all of this outside external physical sensations and just think, like, listen to your thoughts. Like, you know, what is your, 
yeah what are your thoughts trying to tell you that's where the answer is is what i start to think yeah 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 no i sorry i almost interrupted you i get so excited because that sounds like no. <laughs> what we intuitive do like we're just thinking and thinking and we kind of put aside the daily chores like suing uh like i don't yeah. know like start, like I don't know, even cleaning. I'm just, I'm not good at doing any of those things. I like, there is someone who comes and cleans here because I, I just don't, I put, because my mind keeps me so busy and engaged and I'm always thinking of work, you know, wow. what I have to do. And so that engaging with that is like cuts me out of my kind of creative world. So in order to now do mindfulness, then I do something that I normally don't like doing, but that I'm finding pleasure in that's like suing, for instance. God, okay, so I think that is probably the biggest difference, but I think that is the biggest difference between the ESFP and ENFP because I, I yeah, I can't imagine sewing to like, yeah, no. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> no. I mean, and even with cleaning, it's like, I notice like when I'm like, not that I like cleaning and doing chores and things like that, but if I'm like, bored and I'm really not doing anything I'll want to clean or I'll want to do something and physically keep moving um but it's like no just put that down like just seriously just sit down which is like a nightmare for ESFPs to just sit still and just like you know like just come together like <laughs> yeah like that, that's a nightmare <laughs> so do you think that this is because um when you're doing something you're trying to find or seek thrill no I, I don't think so it's it's like it's not thrill I think it's really just that we're just trying to engage with it like if, if it's if it's something in front of us we just want to do it yeah. you know and if it's in a situation like for example you know when the pandemic happened and there's really nothing to do because we can't even go outside or whatever the case then we're going to start doing things around the house or just like physical things, you know? So um, for example, during the pandem pandemic, I remember like uh, my husband and I were more me um, leading, but you know, I was like doing household projects and stuff. And it's like, I guess in essence, I'm like, it's because I can't just sit still. Like, it's like, I need to go to Home Depot. I need to like start repairing things. And it's like, it's like, even then I am still engaging with the sensory. It's not something I usually do because you know, I usually I ignore those things to engage with more fun things. But even in a, in that kind of a situation where we don't have an outside world to interact with, I'm still engaging with something. Yeah. And I think that SE dominance would just sometimes we just need to put that away and just like chill. Think of why you're doing that. Think of the long term. Do you even really need to do that right now? Well, that's you know? amazing. Yeah. Just, just really, yeah. Uh, like makes sense with uh, your inferior, just NI. So you're. Yep. And I, right? Yep. And for yep. me, soon, <laughs> I'm exercising my SI. <laughs> SI, yeah, there you go. But if y'all want a difference between ESFP and ENFP, that's it. Like, that's it's right there. Yeah. What are you using to ground yourself? And when you are doing many things, are you coming up with more ideas or are you actually doing physical things? I think is another difference too. That's another difference for sure. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to get back to go back to the thrill seeking question. Okay, you don't try to find thrill in this particular activity that what you were mentioning, but in general, do you think that you personally try to like seek thrill? Yeah, I think thrill and I mean, it's like almost pleasure is, I, I think it's like a better way to, it's like you, you get the pleasure from doing things. You know, I get the pleasure from like, you know, going to Disneyland all the time or like you know you get the pleasure from do, go, interacting with the outside world it's happy it's fun it's you know bright and shiny and it's just it, it's I, I guess because when I hear thrill to be honest with you for some reason I don't like thrills necessarily I don't find that fun because thrill kind of implies to me it makes me kind of anxious almost like yeah. I don't know how to explain that it's like I would say I like to do fun things or pleasure things I think in that sense maybe I'm even like hedonistic where I'm only doing things because I don't want conflict and I just want to like enjoy myself yeah but thrills I'm like I'm not okay for example when I think thrills I'm thinking of that like crazy like stereotypical ESFP that loves roller coasters and stuff I don't like don't. that's not 
no, that's not me. <laughs> I don't, I, I like mini roller coasters. I like the thrills from like those kind of things that have limits, but I was kind of thinking, okay, well, I guess just because I don't like roller coasters, that doesn't necessarily mean ESFP is out the picture. I think it just means that, you know, I think for SE dominant people, they just tend to like to enjoy whatever's in front of them. Right. And to, yeah. Yeah. Which makes sense. Cause even in like, I guess in the long run, and I kind of taps in to say, okay, it's great that you're enjoying life. It's great. But what's the long term? Why are you doing this? What direction are you going in? That's when NI kicks in to remind us, hey, put that down. <laughs> Love it. Love yeah. It. Interesting. Um, just uh, for the ENFPs watching, um, my experience with the thrill, then um, I don't like thrill. Thrill seeking mm. sensations. What, uh, there is a test for that. High sensation seeking, I think it's called, HSS. Um, I took a test and I scored like two out of 20 or something like that. Like, like really low. Never heard of that. <laughs> yeah, there is a test. You should take it. Maybe I'll share it. Really? To you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because it's like, I think that I get, I do get pleasure out of like, when I go outside, for example, and when I go to like, I don't know, like a loud place or something in that sense. I get, I get, I do get a thrill, I guess, from being with people. I don't know if that, or like, oh, okay. You know what? Hold up. Let okay. me rewind. <laughs> okay. I know what you're trying to say. Okay. It's not necessarily thrill, like roller coasters and doing dangerous things. I think I have a strong enough NI that tells me like, oh, that's not a good idea. However, I will say that I like the energy, the energy from doing things. So I guess in that way, it's kind of thrill seeking in a sense. But I do like to engage with things because I get a thrill off of it or like some kind of an energy, I guess, is what you're saying. Right. So it's like you're seeking things that give you en that kind of an energy. It's not only roller coasters. It can be, um, yeah, maybe even going for like, I don't know, hikes, but, you know, maybe doing the parts of the hikes that maybe are the most difficult because you feel like hey, yeah. being active. Yeah. It's super hard, super difficult, but I have to do it because I feel this thrill. And maybe I am like, okay, no, I'm, I'm done now. I, I can go back. You know, <laughs> I don't need Got it. Okay, no, no, no. <laughs> I, okay, I told, I get it now. Yeah, you're, you're, you're right. It's like when you, when I do hikes and stuff, I can't just do a stroll. Like I need the ropes. I need the like, yeah, okay, I get it. I get it. That's where you're getting enjoyment. It's from that interaction and the energy and the vibe that the thing gives you. That's where, I guess that's what extroverted sensing is really. It's you're getting energy from the objective. What is that giving you, you yeah. know? So, yeah. Um, <laughs> we are running out of time. It's 6 p.m. I think we might yeah. have a second video at some point then because what do you think? This is what happens. This is what happens when you put two EPs together. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, again, it happens the same than, than during the call. Yeah, this is exactly how it was before the call. <laughs> oh my God. All right. So leave us a comment if you would like us to continue because actually there was more planned. So we were supposed to be talking about my SI. So we were supposed to talk about extroverted things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That's so true. Her SI right now is just being triggered because she has a list like, of things she wants to do. Actually, here it is. I mean, I'm not lying. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah my ni is like no i think that i think the audience got the point i think they got the concept <laughs> right right but, that's uh, so funny <laughs> I, want, I wanted for us to talk about ti mostly like a polar function and TI. Right. but leave in the comments below tell us if you like this uh conversation i had with amy Y. if you would like to see a second part i will also put the link to her awesome youtube channel you should definitely check it out um and thank you amy for being here and so thank maybe, you having me. You're welcome. And maybe see you next time. Yes, exactly. And we can continue on this crazy chaotic conversation. For sure. All right. <laughs> thank you. And bye. See you next time. Bye.